Three breakdowns of a deal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go into the three things that prevent you from getting paid. Um, those three things, and of course, a big part of this class is about preparing for your open house. Uh, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Uh, so if you are um, showing up to your open house, you're putting 10 signs in the, in the ground and you're hoping to get lucky, you're not gonna have a super successful open house. Now, if you are preparing for your open house, you know, that Wednesday and you're laying the groundwork for a successful open house, we're gonna talk about how to do that. Um, you're going to have a much more successful or at least more uh, at bats at your open house uh, because that's really what it's all about. Amy, you had how many people walk into your open house on Saturday? Uh, about 10 people. 10 people and you were able to convert? Four of them. Four people. And uh, how many of them came in with that, without an agent? Uh, five of them. Five, so really 80%. Yeah. Well, okay, so four out of the five people that walked in on Saturday, you were able to convert, yeah. which is great. That's great. We always talk about how you really only need to have one deal or one person, one lead come through your open house in order for it to be successful, but you will have a much uh, higher likelihood of getting lucky if you have laid the groundwork for your success, okay? So the three breakdowns are, the first one is capturing the information. Now today we're gonna focus on capturing the information at the open house. Uh, that being said, you can capture the information anywhere. And these scripts work anywhere. So if you meet somebody at, it's okay Dion, we're just getting started. Come on kid, do some push-ups, Marine. Stand in the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, the three breakdowns, the ones that prevent you from getting uh, paid are capturing the information, we're gonna focus, like I said, at the open house, but if you meet somebody in the grocery store, mom moms meet somebody everywhere. Um, and it's a great opportunity to then, at that point, uh, go into the closing script um, and start gathering intel, which we're gonna talk about later. Uh, scheduling the showing is the second breakdown. And then the third breakdown is writing the offer at the showing, um, or of course, recalibrating if it doesn't work out. So the first breakdown is capturing the information at the open house, one of the biggest, um, preconceived uh, misnomers, I guess might be the right way of saying that, is that you need a listing to have an open house. A lot of agents think that you need a listing. And we've talked about a lot of this right here in our community, but for the people online, you can borrow a listing from another agent. You could borrow a listing from an agent at eXp. They don't have to be at eXp for you to um, benefit from uh, working their open house. Some of the, the great people to, to work with are out of area agents. These are people that don't live here. They don't care if they get more listings in this area. They don't wanna hold it open, it, especially um, because it's a huge drive for them. It's a big commitment. They wanna farm listings in their own area. It's like if we were to get a listing out in Oceanside, right? Or out in, you know, down in San Diego. You might not wanna make the drive even if it's gonna be a successful open house because we wanna have more work here in our area. Um, your area listings, when you're going through the broker or through the MLS, start with SW, which start that's Southwest Riverside. So anything that starts with OC, that's Orange County, or um, any other uh, number of beginnings to the MLS on the on the left side for the listing, um, that will tell you whether or not it's out of area. Now you can search for homes that are vacant, which of course are great ones to hold open because you don't have to worry about working with the seller. Um, you could search for homes by area if you wanted to work in the same area um, or by days on market. Now it really depends on what you're trying to commit to. For me, I'm really about my farm. I want to be off Benton or off Thompson every time that I'm holding an open house if possible. Um, being where you live, being near where you live, in my opinion, is a huge benefit because it just plants that credibility. You know, like I'm not gonna sleazeball you because you you might run into me at the grocery store, right? Um, okay, so call or text agents. Hey, congratulations on your listing on you know 123 Easy Street. Can I hold your listing open for you on Thursday and Friday this week? Okay, great, I really appreciate it. Can I market that listing for you? Now that's a big thing. If you can go and market that listing for them, it looks to everybody in the neighborhood that you have your own listing. Um, and people are going to assume, even other agents walk into my open houses when I'm holding other agents' listings open, and they assume that it's my listing. So, you know, assumption in a lot of ways is, uh, perception is reality, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so market your listings. Uh, flyers, I'm huge on flyers. I think 400 is the right number, but at least 40 on your closest neighbors. Uh, getting it on social media, getting it on Facebook, 
Um, and of course, you could create, you could go to the extremes, create a core, KV core page, farm that out, post it in different places, post it on Craigslist, which is the number one place where people start their home search on Craigslist. In KV core, there are all sorts of great tools, which I'm not going to get into today because this is in a KV core class and I'm not a big KV core expert, but you could generate it so that it will create these pages automatically for you on, Cra uh, on Craigslist. You want to be everywhere. So you want to be online, you want to be in the neighborhood, you want to be on the door. So this is one of Zach's flyers This for uh, his social media. Um, this is what it looks like when I hold an open house in the neighborhood. And then right over here, this is a flyer that somebody might see on their door, let, letting them know when the open house is and where it is so that they can come and meet me um, at my open house. Look, these are some tips for a successful open house. Pass out bottled water and information. The bottled water is optional. So you want to become educated in order to dominate, educate to dominate, um, and you need to do that by putting in your computer work before you put in your footwork. A successful open house starts early. Any day of the week is great for an open house. It's not just about Saturdays and Sundays. If you can be near uh, schools, main roads, shopping centers, these are all great places. People are going to go to Starbucks all week. People are going to go to school and they're going to drop off during a certain time and pick up during a certain time. Uh, is it close to a Costco? You know, can you, uh, this is a great way to claim real estate by just putting a sign in the door, in the floor, in the ground. Um, excuse me. Uh, weekdays are great for sellers because that's who's home. So if you hold an open house on Wednesday and Thursday, are there a bunch of out of area buyers that are coming because you posted the open house online and they're already working with an agent at Huntington Beach? No, it's a bunch of neighbors. It's a bunch of people that have homes to sell. So I really like to hold open houses during the week because it's a great opportunity to meet the people who are home, which are sellers. Have real conversations with them. Um, during the weekends, you're gonna get a lot more buyers. A lot of people who came out to the area to look at open houses and they've got a schedule, they've got an itinerary. Um, I say put out 40 to 400 flyers for every open house. In the beginning of my career, I put out 400 and I didn't have to do it for very long. You know, we've all talked about I had seven escrows in my second month, and a big part of that, I'm telling you, was the flyers. Just letting people know where to find you. Um, put out 20 to 40 open house signs. If you put out 10, it's not enough. Um, you can put out more, but what you don't want it to be is you don't want it to be sign vomit on the side of the road, uh, where you put up 10, 12 signs in a row, and we've all seen that. And people drive by it, in my opinion, they're like, oh, what's that person's problem? They've got mental issues. Circle prospect around your open house. You can partner with a uh, title company to do this. Tycor is of course who we use. Um, Hector Gomez is our title rep. Um, and you can get set up with your farm. Uh, Circle prospect, you can either slide dial, which is like a direct voicemail. Hey, this is David Circle. I'm sorry that I missed you. I've got an open house coming this weekend. And everybody knows for the most part at this point that they're getting a voicemail from somebody that didn't want to talk to them. Or you can actually plug it in and talk to them. Hey, this is David Serpa. I'm going to be on Breitner, um, which is just a street over from my house uh, in our neighborhood this weekend from Saturday and Sunday, uh, 11 to 3. And if people get that personalized voicemail, that personalized phone call, of course, it's going to mean more. But are you going to go with the sniper approach, the specialist approach, or are you going to go with the machine gunner's approach, which is accuracy by volume? <laughs> just try to hit everything. Might just put people off. Might break some eggs, but you're going to make an omelet, right? Um, Ask agents if they can advertise uh, for you on the MLS. Now, if they advertise the listing on the MLS, it goes to all the secondary websites that people are utilizing. Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, et cetera, and so forth. And now people come out to the open house. Now, who's there to greet them? You, right? Um, which is why I always say Zillow, use them. Don't be used by Zillow, use Zillow. If they're gonna promote our open house, be the person who's writing the offer, right? Um, okay, uh, and then familiarize yourself with the home, the neighborhood, the area, and the schools. Uh, that's really important. If somebody comes in and they're just getting somebody who's sitting there to pass the time, and they're not getting information, they're gonna keep going to the next open house, and they're gonna meet somebody who's gonna give them the information that they've been looking for for the last six months that they've been looking at open houses. I'm really big about creating branded areas. Now, Amy, I used your flyers for this. The, the setup that you have, it's just really great. So I ended up um, throwing it up here. 
if you create a branded area, how many times does somebody need you to see your face in order for you to become familiar? Three times. Three times. So what I like to do is I like to create branded areas, just like new homes do. KB, Lennar, where they've got flyers all over the house talking about them, talking about home buying, talking about their services. And I like to do the same thing with my open house so that while they're walking around, they're getting information about me. They can pick up a business card without me knowing about it, uh, et cetera and so forth. And that way, by the time that they come up and they see me, I'm already in their head as an expert and I'm familiar, right? Um, so uh, Amy's branding is really great for that. Um, I really love the all of the stickers and the coloring books. Um, the longer that you can keep kids entertained, the better of a possibility that you have of working with their, their parents. Uh, okay, so a couple of big notes here. Remind homeowners if you have a listing or if you're working at a, a vacant list. Hey, uh, just a reminder, we're gonna have people walking through the house, put away the guns, any medicine, any jewelry, and any cash. I've had one thing get stolen in thousands of open houses, and it was a, a wedding ring that somebody left on the counter, uh, and then they left. She wasn't mad at me about it, but she knew she left it on the counter, and people do things when they're not being watched. So uh, again, most people don't come in looking to rip people off at an open house, but just let people know. Create a branded area out of your open house, like I said. Um, have available printouts or iPad access to the uh, closest 75 to 100 closest listings. This is something Mom Moms has gotten great at. This is something we used to teach in the three breakdowns of a deal that we stopped teaching because we stopped talking about same day appointments during COVID-19. So it's all about getting them out the door that day. If they drove out from Orange County and they came out to see homes, help them see a home that they actually want to see that they can hopefully qualify for that day. They're not a client until you meet them outside of your open house. So if you have 75 to 100 closest listings printed off or uh, on your iPad so that they have access to it, and it's, hey, here you go. This is the, the 75 closest listings. There's actually six that are listed under 600,000, uh, three of which that I think that would fit your uh, your budget and because they're single story homes. Two of those are vacant. And so I think I could probably get you into two of those. I can work on getting you into the third today by four o'clock. I'll meet you at the vacant one and I'll work on the other two. Sound good? You know what I'm saying? And then that way, if you know your inventory and you could talk like that off the top of your head, it really puts you in a situation of the trusted advisor to where they know, like, and trust you and they want to do business with you because they know it's going to benefit them. Sound good? Okay. Uh, wake up the house. Um, turn on the lights, open the blinds. Uh, position your table and chair so that you can see the entrance. Uh, don't hold the house hostage or require a sign in. Uh, to Just let them see the home. And then that way you have something to compare it to. Um, we're not going to go too into body language today. We've done this in the past, but uh, it is a time killer. And so um, if you are interested in that, you can read a book that Zach recommends called What Everybody Is Saying. Body language is important. Intonation is important. It's incredibly important not to talk like you work at Jamba Juice. Oh, would you like a free booster with your, your shot? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, what size drink would you like? Bring it down and register. You can be of service without being a servant. And people like to talk to people that have a lower register of their voice because it calms them and it lets them know that you're in control, you're in command. Especially with women, women increase their ROI on their, their investment, on their time, their energy, and their money when they start speaking like a boss uh, because a lot of us have been taught to be customer service representatives. And that's not really what we're doing. We're, you know, it's about being a boss, being authoritative. Um, okay. Uh, now give each guest, ideally, I would love for you to give them three flyers. The property flyer, there's a little bit of information about the property. This is your payment. This is what it's gonna be for VA, FHA, conventional, USDA if it applies. And here's a, a flyer about me. This is who I am. And then when you give them all three of those flyers, a lot of agents are not doing that. They walk away with your stack of three color flyers. You can get the color uh, or the lender flyers from your lender. You can have a whole stack of about me flyers that you just have ready to go. And then you print off 10, 15 open house flyers every time that you go out. And that way you're passing out three color flyers. They're gonna put it on the floor of their car. They're gonna crumple it up and put it in the back seat, but eventually they're gonna take it out and they're going to look at it. And then they have one thing that they walked away with that day. Okay, all right. Um, I'm sorry that I'm really going on and on. Um, it's important, this stuff is, I used to talk about it a lot longer. It was really condensed. Here's the script. 
Hey, welcome to the open house. My name is David. Now, at this point, you want to try to get their names because you want to try to log it away so that you're not asking them for their names during the script later. If you don't get their name right here, don't ask them for the name during the script because it defamiliarizes you. It makes you a stranger. It makes you somebody who doesn't know who they are, right? So if you don't get their name right here at the beginning, don't worry about it until it's, oh, hey, I'm so sorry. I actually forgot to ask you for your name after you get everything else, okay? Hey, uh, my name is David Serpa. Uh, welcome to the open house. Here's a little bit of information about me, about the house, and about what your payment would be uh, when and if you decided to move in. Uh, now, this is a five bedroom home with a loft and a downstairs bedroom and bath. It's priced at 750,000. Uh, it was listed seven days ago. Now, please feel free to take a look around. Let me know if you have any questions. Now, at this point, let them go. We don't have to linger like a fart. We don't have to freaking follow them around the kitchen. Oh, as you can see, this is a kitchen. This is a backyard. Just let them do their thing. And then when they come back, it's, hey, so what'd you think? Just that. Now, if they go, eh, uh, let them off the hook. Don't make them tell you that it wasn't the one. Just go, hey, not exactly what you're looking for, huh? and then find out what they were looking for. And then we move on to the intel gathering stage, which we'll get into here in a moment. Now, don't write off the fact that this might be it. This might be the one, which is what a lot of people do. And then they end up being surprised when somebody comes in and wanting to write on an offer on the open house that they have open. That happens in very low inventory markets, which we are in, and which we are going to be in for the foreseeable future. Um, so you might just get lucky just by doing some average, but you get more lucky if you do a little bit of work, right? Um, hey, uh, so what'd you think? Oh, we love it. Uh, we drove out here from Redlands. We love the house. Um, you know, we, oh, really? Uh, okay, well, what do you want to come in at? Now, either they're going to laugh because they were being nice. Oh, we love it. Ha, ha, ha. They don't really love it. Or they're going to be like, I'm thinking like 785, 780. We don't want to lose this, right? At that point, start thinking about how to wrap up that deal. And we're gonna talk about how to do that quickly. So what happens if they walk in and they wanna write an offer? It's something we haven't really discussed in the original three breakdowns. Uh, hey, what do you wanna come in at? That's a very harmless question. You should have done your market analysis before you walked in, and you should have a pretty good idea of what this house is gonna go for, right? Uh, hey, what do you wanna come in at? Well, will this be cash or will we be using financing? Don't assume that they're not a cash buyer. And also it gives, it, it, hey, I'm assuming that you might have cash. Oh, you know what, I'm actually gonna be needing financing. And then it's not your job to figure out what kind of financing it's gonna be, to figure out their down payment, to figure out what their EMD is going to be. Leave the money to the money talkers, right? Let the lenders talk about money. That's what they get paid to do, right? Let them disqualify them. You don't need to disqualify them and you don't need to disqualify yourself. What do you wanna come in at? Okay, is this gonna be cash or will you be using financing? Okay, do you have your lender's information or would you like me to connect you with the lender? Right? It's very non-threatening. I'll work with whoever you want me to work with. Do not talk about closing costs. Do not talk about down payments or loan types. Uh, let your lender have the money conversations. What's your timeline looking like? When would you like to move in? It's a great closing line. Hey, what's your timeline looking like? When ideally everything works out, when would you like to move in? So all you're looking for Hey Zach, would you mind grabbing me the water? I'm sorry. All you're looking for is the uh, what they want to come in at and when they want to move in. That's it for that initial conversation. And then what you're going to say is, hey, I'm going to talk to my lender. I'm going to talk to my team. Thank you so much. And we're going to figure out the best way to structure this and we'll give you a call in a few hours. Sound good? I'm going to talk to my lender. Or I'm going to talk to your lender. I'm going to talk to my team. We're gonna figure out the best way to structure this and uh, I'll, I'll uh, give you a call in a few hours. You know what I should have added was, I'm gonna call the other agent. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really, th those are the, the conversations we wanna have. I'll talk to your lender, I'm gonna talk to my team, I'm gonna talk to the other agent. We'll figure out the best way to structure this and I'll give you a call in a few hours. Does that sound good? You wanna get a yes as much as possible and you're gonna see that throughout my script. Everything is about getting a yes as often as possible. Here's the intel gathering. This is what happens if, hey, so what'd you think? Eh, well, it wasn't what you were, exactly what you are looking for, huh? What are you guys looking for? What'd you come out here looking for? It's a long drive out here from Orange County. Okay, find out bedrooms. Zach has an acronym for this called Bab Cadabra. 
Did you want to explain back to Dapper or do you? Okay, do you want to go ahead and give it to everybody? I get to give credit today way on this actually. Dave was the one that came up with it. So back to Dapper is an easy way when you're first learning this to remember it. And you can literally write it on your page, okay? So BAB, beds and bath, KAD, kids and dogs, A, area, P, price, A, approval, R, renting, A, appointment. Everybody got that? Bravo. Okay. So well, I think I got it right. Well, we'll go with <laughs> Bravo. Okay, so. yeah. it's, it's great. Dave uh, developed that uh, little acronym or extraordinarily long acronym uh, after watching three breakdowns of the deal. So it, it is based on this script. Um, Zach's going to write it over here on the board and uh, we'll get it added to this presentation. So bedrooms, uh, find how many bedrooms are you looking for? Oh, and, and all of these are conversation starters because you're looking for the compelling reason. Um, I, there's no cameras. You're not okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, bedrooms. How many bedrooms are you guys looking for? Oh, well, we're looking for at least five bedrooms. Five bedrooms, that's a big family, right? So start finding these things out. All of these are opportunities to get more information, uh, but don't get so redundant. Uh, how many baths do you guys want? Uh, at least two baths. Wow, you guys poop a lot. You know what I mean? Like you guys don't, don't need to get crazy with it. Bedrooms, baths, square footage. How much home are you guys looking for? Uh, what, what kind of lot size? You guys have any kids or dogs? Why do you ask? Well, you know, people who have dogs don't really want them pooping on a tiny little patio, right? So how big are your dogs? Um, are your kids currently going to Temecula schools? Not where do your kids go to school? Your kids are currently in Temecula Unified. This lets them know if they're, or lets you know if they're relocating. Find out additional details. Uh, are you looking for a single story? Uh, or two story, what would you prefer? Uh, would you prefer to have a pool? Um, and of course, don't start asking them questions that uh, are way out of their price point, right? So if they're squeaking into the neighborhood and if you ask them a bunch of things about pools and how much home they want and whatnot, you're kind of disqualifying them, you know what I mean? Uh, so that comes with being familiar with your inventory. Uh, now, what price are you comfortable keeping it under? Not, what are you approved at? How much money are you ready to spend? Uh, hey, freaking, uh, what are you guys comfortable spending? It's a much more comfortable way of saying that. Now, at this point, when you are going through this, you're not writing the information down as you're going. It's not, um, oh, how many bedrooms? Uh, how many baths? Okay. Because the second that you look down and you start writing, they're gonna be like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Because they don't want you to write it down because they might not, might not be sold on working with you, right? So that's why everything is, you keep it down, you keep it down. And then when you're ready to repeat their values back to them, Take out the notepad, take out the pen, you start writing it down. And at this point, your eyes go down and you do not look up until the end of the script. So you go down. Okay, so you guys are looking for five bed bedrooms on a large lot. Uh, you don't want an HOA because you're looking for some RV parking, uh, preferably a single story, and you want to keep it under 750,000. Well, what's a good email for me to send these listings to? Now, you keep your tone down. What's a good email for me to send these listings to? Not, what's a good email for me to send these listings to? Did you want fries, curly fries, or onion rings? You know what I mean? You're, you you want to bring it down like you're talking like a doctor because what you're doing is you're asking a question, but it sounds like a statement. Okay, what's a good email for me to send these listings to? This is a presumptive close. Give them all their information. You weren't talking to them for the last 10 minutes for your health. This is for them, their well-being, so that they can have a more informed buying experience the next time that they drive out, so they don't drive out for two hours and then not see anything that they like, right? So you're doing this as a favor to them. Now, hey, what's a good email for me to send these listings to? Okay, great. What's a good phone number for me to reach you at? Can I text you this number? At that point, that's when you look up, you reverse it, the intonation goes up, because you wanna find out whether or not they give you a bunk number, whether or not they give you a home phone number, you want their cell phone number because that's what it takes to do business right now. Sound good? Okay, now, so it looks like this. Okay, so you're looking for this, you're looking for that, blah, 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 blah. The intonation kind of keeps going down and down and down. Now, what's a good email for me to send these listings to? What's a good phone number for me to reach you at? Can I text you this number? Okay, great. Okay, now at this point, you set the expectations. I'm gonna send you some homes. If you see anything that you like, please feel free to mark the heart icon and we'll go out and we'll take a look. Does it sound good? A pro tip, go through properties as you're setting the expectations 
in your mind physically you know, as you're doing it so that you can hopefully set that same day appointment. Because it's more, hey, you, so you said that you're looking for 750,000, okay. Um, so there's actually four properties that fit your criteria. Um, all of my pool homes are marked with a blue tab. Um, and we could probably go see a couple of these today at four o'clock after I pick up my open house signs. Does sound good? Okay, cool. Why, why drive all the way back to Orange County without seeing some homes, right? Um, cool. Be prepared. Uh, show up ready to rock and roll. Don't show up having not put anything in your work. Now, objection co overcoming is what it's all about because you're going to get a lot of men who cross their arms and look at the ceiling. Um, which is an indication that they're not interested. And so you've got to give them enough information. You've got to get the people who are rushing in and rushing out information that says, hey, I'm valuable past my ability to make it possible. Good to go. Uh, hey, we're just looking. Hey, you want me to help you look? What are you guys looking for? Oh, yeah, no, no, we're just looking. Hey, I get it. You want me to help you look? Oh, I don't want to put you out or anything. Oh, you're not putting me out. I could actually put you guys on an auto trip. That way you guys are seeing what I see when it comes out, when you want to see it. When do you guys want to receive emails? Just a couple of times a week? I'm telling you, these people that come in and they're just looking, they buy eventually. Everybody's just looking until it comes time to buy. Until they meet a salesperson, exactly. That's a great, that's a great quote. Uh, hey, what are you looking for? I can help you look. You want to see what I'm seeing a couple of times a week? Okay. Specific, when were you guys thinking about moving? A couple of years from now? Oh, you guys are getting ready to retire. So like you just have these little conversations, you get their information still, just as a looky loop. -look. Everything is an at bad. Uh, Cause you're not moving here in the next year, right? Nobody starts a real estate business like, I'm gonna start a real estate business here, and then I'm gonna get out of here in six months. Okay, hey, we're not ready to sell. That's a big one. Hey, we're not ready to sell, but they end up. We're not ready to sell. Hey, I completely understand you're in the information gathering stage, am I right? Just not say it like it's not a script. Yeah, I completely understand. You're just in the information gathering stage, am I right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm in, the information gathering stage. Well, why don't I help you gather all the information that you need, that way you can make the best decision for you and your family, even if that's not to sell. Does that sound good? Okay, great. I'm gonna send you over a market analysis. It'll let you know what your home is worth. Start telling them what you're gonna do, even when you don't have the information to be able to do it. I'm gonna send you a market analysis. It'll tell you what your home is worth. Uh, what you can expect to make and how I can help you market it when the time comes. It really only takes me about 10, 15 minutes. I'll send it over to you and that way you know what your home's worth. Sound good? I don't, even, I don't even have an address yet, but I'm telling them what I'm going to do. So that's setting the expectation that's a presumptive close. Um, hey, sound good? Is that fair? Is that all right? Why don't we do this? Is that okay? Does that work for you? No one's going to say, that doesn't sound good. It's not fair. It's not all right. I don't want to do this. It's not okay. And it doesn't work for me. Because it puts them in a combative situation. So what you do is you give them a situation to where the ex expectation from them is that they're going to say yes and okay. Uh, there's a couple of redirections that you can go through for people in order to, uh, if you're losing them, you leave out a little bit of line, right? And then you hook them back in. Hey, has anybody talked to you about the school zones? Okay, I just figured while you're out here, there's actually three different school zones in just this little area right here. And I figured some of you might want to tell you, Stemecula Unified School District, Murrieta, and uh, Paris Unified. Oh, okay, well, just, you know, figure that out, you know. You know what I mean? And then at that point, you, okay, well, this is where the border is. It's Winchester Road. It's, you know, halfway through Spencer's Crossing. And that way they get the value in working with you, right? Their kids' education is down the line. Um, with men, this is particularly a good one. Um, and you know, and I don't say this to be sexist. This is just a good one for men generally. Uh, hey, is anybody talking about taxes? Oh, nobody's talking about taxes. Um, well, you can actually save three to four hundred dollars a month. And actually, I've broken it down in this class where you can save five hundred dollars a month. I just don't want to oversell, right? You over, under promise and over deliver. And you can save three to four hundred dollars a month just by focusing in low tax neighborhoods with lower or no HOA, just depending on what you're looking for. Did you want an HOA? Is there a particular reason why you might want to look in a high tax neighborhood? You know what I mean? Like, and then that way, if, if you can save somebody three to four hundred dollars a month, you're valuable past their friend who lives out on the coast who doesn't even know anything about the area that you live in. Uh, one more thing, and there's really two more things. Are you currently working or are you currently renting? And are you currently working with a lender? Um, and this is how you do it. Hey, one more thing before you go, after you already have, have their information, because we do not lose the deal for a lender, 
and we do not lose the deal trying to get find out about the home that they need to sell before you figure out about the home that they want to buy. Good to go. Um, hey, are you currently renting? If yes, it's not a throwaway question. Set up the timeline. Are you month to month? You want to find out when. Oh yeah, you know I actually have to be out on the sixth. No kidding. We better start looking. You know what I mean? Put them in that we situation. We better start looking. We got to get you an escrow here in the next probably week uh, in order to in order to really have you get a chance on. Is there any wiggle room in that at all? They said you know they have people moving in on the thirteenth. Worst case scenario, I got to be out on the eleventh. You know what I mean? And then that way they're confiding in you. They're giving you information that now you need to utilize in order to properly serve them. Oh, you know what? Um, we've got about six months left on our lease, uh, but we could probably get out of it. Well, we've got about six months left, left on our lease. If you found the right home, would you want to get out of it? Could you get out of it? Okay, cool. Right? Uh, so if no, hey, uh, are you currently renting? No, I'm not renting. Uh, I actually own my house. That's what a lot of people say. I actually own my house. Oh, wow. Phenomenal. Amazing. Uh, hey, no, I actually own my house. Okay, great. Would you need to sell your current house in order to buy a new home? There's a lot of house and home disassociation with me. Would you need to sell the, the house that you're currently living in in order to buy a new home? Okay, what's the address for the house that you're currently living in? We're not even calling it their home. Where do you live? What's the address of your home? What's the address for the house that you're currently living in? Um, and then are you currently working with the lender? If they say yes, I'm happy to work with anyone that you're comfortable with. Who's your lender? Because you want to find out if they're actually working with the lender and you want to get that information, that lender's information. You want to call that lender. You want to establish yourself as their agent. You get what I'm saying? Because that lender might be working with another agent who might be trying to work you out, right? And so you want to be the person that is of priority. Uh, no, uh, I'm not working with the lender. Hey, I have a few great lenders. I can have them reach out to you on Monday if that's okay. Does that work for you? Um, do not lose the deal before you have it. Uh, a couple last notes, and then we'll get into the second breakdown. Uh, first breakdown notes, you may have to kiss a few frogs, right? Uh, and I made this, trust me, I'm an investor. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, somebody might actually be an investor. Somebody actually might be working in cash, but you don't know until you spend a little bit of time on them. Now, Jim, am I actually saying that you need to kiss these frogs? You don't actually have to kiss them, you just might have to spend a little bit of time with them. Uh, don't assume that people can't buy. Assuming is really what gets you in trouble in this business. And then, like I said, body language is important, tone is important, uh, especially when you're expressing that you can be of service without being a servant. Not, oh, yes, Master, I can do whatever you want me to do, whenever you want me to do it, and I don't need to spend any time with my family. I'll always answer your phone call. I'll get up from dinner. It's not that. It's about setting the expectation of being a professional, okay? Uh, you want to sell a house. You don't want to sell this house. A lot of people get stuck up thinking that, oh, I need to sell this house to somebody when they walk in. Not if they're not looking for it. Just do your job, right? Um, and even when people would walk into homes that I was representing, I would still say, hey, do you want to go see these other two homes right around the corner? And that way you've got a frame of reference for whether or not this is home tr it's truly the one for you. Are they going to be like, no, I want this one. Or, yeah, that'd be great. And they're probably going to double back on that one anyway. Um, so, and then this above all things, this above all thy, uh, this above all, to thine own self be true, William Shakespeare. Uh, this above all, Know thine inventory. That is the most important part of your job, knowing your inventory. I made that one and I also made this one. Are you guys impressed? Um, <laughs> has anybody seen American Beauty? I will sell this house today. I will sell this house today. You know, again, you don't have to sell this house, you have to sell a house. Any questions really quick about the first breakdown? Okay. At this point, we're going to get into the second breakdown of the deal. Uh, by Mr. Zach Bach, which is scheduling the appointment. Thank you. So, fancy. I didn't realize I was going to have an iPad I can hold, but I thought I was going to like, look at the screen. This is, man, we're getting so tech savvy in here. So, of course, the goal is that same day appointment, right? And the goal is, hey, hopefully we write an offer that day that we meet somebody. But how many times has that happened? Okay. I've had that happen once. I don't know how many times David's has had it, had it happen, but it doesn't happen that often, okay? So realistically, you're gonna have to do the, the horrible F word, follow up. And that's what the second breakdown is. It's how to follow up with somebody and set an appointment. By a show of hands, who's held an open house and never called the client that you met at an open house? I have. Yeah, I forgot to call him, lost the notepad, Jackson took the notepad and stuffed it somewhere. And because I didn't put it into my CRM, I potentially missed out. Right? 
follow-up is where it's at. Fortune is in the follow-up. We had 7 million real estate leads generated, but only like a million of them even got a phone call. 50%, over 50% of leads will never even get contacted. No phone call, no text, no email, no nothing. But we have these people that are walking in, they're giving us their information, and even then they don't get followed up with half the time. And so what we're gonna talk about today is how to do that. So the best CRM on the planet, everybody asks that as agents. What's the CRM I should use? What should I use? What should I use? The best CRM that you should use is the one that you're going to use. I don't care if it's a yellow notepad. I don't care if it's KD Core. I don't care if it's follow-up boss. Whatever it is, you have to dedicate yourself to it. Dave Wegg uses an Excel spreadsheet. I think he's crazy, but that's what he uses as a CRM that it works for because he's created this Excel spreadsheet and it works. Okay, David, for the first few years in his business, he literally had just stacks of yellow notepads. I still do. And he still does. Right? Christian Stone was the same way. Yellow notepads. Now, we're a little more tech advanced. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with a good CRM like KV Core. So the best CRM is the one that you use, okay? So it takes on average between eight to 12 contacts on a lead to convert them, to turn them into somebody that wants to buy a house. The average millennial from first click to close, from the time that they say, I'm gonna look at a house, and they go online and they search for buying a house, to when they actually close escrow, does anybody know how long it is, timeline-wise? 22 months. It's almost two years. How many people have a lead in here that you've never followed up, that you haven't followed up with for two years and you gave up on? A lot of people have. I have. But that person ended up buying a house. And I called them seven months after I was supposed to call them and said, hey, this is Zach, I'm really sorry. Oh yeah, we bought it about five months ago. Shoot, all right, well, congrats on the new house. Congratulations, really happy for you guys. Thanks, you know, good job. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm kicking myself, okay? So, one of the best things you can do is work smarter, not harder, okay? I uh, <clears throat> people all the time where what they're willing to do is they're willing to spend tons of money on internet leads, right? They're chasing dollars in the wind. They say, oh my God, there's a dollar blowing, and they're chasing it through the parking lot trying to grab it. But what they're missing is that there's $100 bills on the ground because they're so focused on that $1 blowing in the wind. Yeah, I saw a, a pretty big lender talk about this. Real estate agents spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars going after this elusive new business that's ready to just lay down and buy a house immediately. But they won't spend $100 on a past client, on a friend, on a family member, on a sphere of influence, on their local geo farm. They won't spend any money on that, but they'll spend thousands of dollars for the elusive lead ready to buy right now. Right? And so past clients, sphere, neighbors, those are all the people that you should be spending money on. Though that is the people that will get you the most about a business, the longevity in your business. There's so many lead generation sources out there. Thousands of them. Thousands. And all of them will sell you on the same thing. Exclusive leads, just for you. Maybe they have an ISA program to follow up with the leads for you. But none of that is a substitution for hard work. Okay? So you have to follow up with your with your neighbors, right? And we talk all the time, David's talked about it, on ways to follow up. Local events, what's going on, how are you giving back to the community? Is it an open house? Is it a trash pickup? Figure out a way to follow up. There's gonna be more scripts about that on how to circle prospect, how to circle prospect for garage sales, how to circle prospect for trash cleanups, how to circle prospect for an Easter event, whatever it may be. We can teach all that kind of stuff. And there'll be more scripts about that in another part of the video, but this one isn't focused on those scripts, okay? So your brand is your promise. You know, for me and David, we talked a long time about a brand being no gimmicks. No gimmicks, right? I'm not gonna buy your house if I don't sell it, right? I'm not gonna offer you 70% of market value if I don't sell your house, I'm just gonna sell your house. And if I'm doing something wrong, I'm gonna admit to that to my clients, right? Your brand is a promise. And what does your brand represent, okay? Um, who knows what the, what the goal of every phone call is? What was it? To get an appointment. To get an appointment, right? Every meeting that you have with somebody, your goal is an appointment. Okay? I don't care if it's a break bread. I don't care if they're two years out. One of the first clients I ever closed, sold the house in Hemet, they were over a year out when I first met them. I guess they weren't one of the first. They are actually a year in. But one of the first clients I ever had was, I met them at that Starbucks right over there. And they said, hey, we're like a year away from buying. We just started our jobs. We can't buy. We can't do this. But in, I met with them anyway because it was important to break bread. 
Oftentimes people say the gold standard is a phone call, not an email, not a text message, a phone call. No, gold standard is breaking bread with somebody. And this is where I'm a huge proponent of. I don't care if they're a tire kicker. I don't care if they're not ready to buy a house. Follow up with them and set an appointment because your sphere of influence has a sphere of influence. And if you can get 100 raving fans, now you're done, you're set at that point. Everybody know what 100 raving fans means. That means that if real estate is brought up in the conversation, they're like, mom is the one, she's the one that you need to call right now. Don't call anybody else, call her. You get 100 people that are willing to do that for you because all of them probably have 10 to 15 close friends, right? So 100 times 15, that's 1,500 people in your local community that are gonna hear about you as a real estate agent. At a 6% annual turnover of people willing to sell their house, that's 60 to 90 deals a year just from having 100 raving fans. That sounds too good to be true, but it's just math and math doesn't lie. Like David always liked to say, if you hack the algorithm, you'll figure it out. It'll work, right? So um, anybody that's been around me, never call the check-in. Hey, hey Zach, I'm uh, just calling to check in. How are you? What, what do you want? What, what's up, dude? What do you need? Hey, I'm just calling to check in. How's your day going? Right, you're not this person's spouse. You're not their best friend. Maybe you are calling your best friend, you're calling your spouse, right? Hopefully your spouse would use you to buy real estate. But never call to check in, especially clients that you've met at an early house. You need to call with value. Hey David, hey it's Zach, I met you on Sunday. Hey brother, I know that you said that you were looking for a four bedroom house with a pool. I was just out looking at the inventory and I found the exact house that you're looking for. Does today at 415 or tomorrow at 945 work better for you to go see the perfect house for you? Right, call with value. Hey brother, I wanted to verify something about you know the school district. I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that. Hey, are you aware of this new program that's happening? Call with value. Never to check in, because when you call to check in, you're taking time, but you're not providing anything, okay? Um, kind of already went over that, good to go. So, when you're talking to somebody, right? Hey, you know me, you know who I am, you know what I stand for. You know that I'm, I am your real estate professional and I'm here to help you. That's one of the things that I've been saying in all of my videos for any of you that watch them. Hi, my name is Zachary Bach. I'm your real estate professional. I'm your realtor, right? Reinforce that. When you, ha when you have the script at the open house, hey, go ahead and go home. We don't need to go to any more open houses today. I'm your real estate agent. I'll take care of you. I'll find you exactly what you're looking for. You don't need to talk to anybody else. Okay, reinforce that when you're on the phone call with them. Show them that you're working for them. Hey mom, I found the three houses that you were looking for. Let's go look at those today. Does this time or that time work better for you? Okay. Show them, hey, I'm top of mind. Now all of us know that it's an automatic email that we're sending people every morning. But I don't tell them, I don't tell them that. You know, hey, I found four houses that you're looking for. Here's the four houses. This is what you want. I've been looking at the inventory for you. The beautiful part about the automatic emails from the MLS is you can see how many times somebody viewed a house, right? You can log in and go, oh, they looked at this house 14 times. They obviously like it. Hey, Dallas, I, I was looking at the, your housing search and I found this house on 123 Main Street and I think it's really close to what you're looking for. What's she gonna think? Holy crap, he's a mind reader. I was just looking at that this morning, right? Utilize the tools that you have. Don't make it in a creepy way. Hey, Dallas, I noticed that you were looking at that house a lot. Do you like that one? <laughs> That's creepy, don't do that, right? But be that salesperson, okay, be that salesperson. Uh, difference between house and home. We just talk about this a lot. Okay, the how you're moving out of your new house into your new home. Yeah, I found I found your home. I found your home. If you want to go home? Let's go home. Okay. <laughs> they're so funny. Um, if they're unavailable, hey, they're unavailable for the appointments. Hey, I'm sorry, my kids got soccer today. Is it creepy to put into your CRM in the notes their kids have soccer on Tuesday nights? No. No. Right. That's rapport building stuff. Hey David, I know that I know that Wyatt's got soccer today, um, but I, you told me last time that soccer ends at six o'clock. This is a hot house and it fits what you're looking for. Could you guys meet me at six forty-five? I know that's a little late for showing. I'll show up with some Del Taco for your kids because I know they need dinner. Is that okay to do? Absolutely. Hey, I know that I know you're a caffeine addict. I'll show up with some Starbucks. What's your drink? He tells me to drink from Starbucks. See what else am I do? I'm gonna put that in because now I know his drink. Right? Hey, I know, hey, we're almost done with showings, dude. You're, you and your wife's drinks are ready to pick up at Starbucks. Wait, what? You order some drinks? Yeah, your, your, drinks are, your drinks are on the mobile order at Starbucks. You don't forget them, somebody else might grab them. 
Okay? Doing stuff like that sets you apart. It sets you at the next level where you're not just a salesperson trying to sell a house. You're a friend. You're somebody that has built so much rapport with somebody that they're like, I would never use anybody else. Whether you walk into another open house, like, hey, I have some cookies. Meanwhile, they have the Starbucks that you just want. And they're like, I don't want your cheap cookies. I have Starbucks, right? So take care of your people. Hey, um, all this kind of stuff, it's about the appointment. Hey, okay, so today, today at four doesn't work. What about tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow doesn't work. What about Thursday? Okay, Thursday doesn't work. Are you free this weekend at 9 15? No does not mean no. No means that you haven't asked the right question and get a yes. Your goal is an appointment. Hey, hey we're leaving We're leaving on vacation. When do you get back? Okay, so you need a day to decompress. Okay, as soon as you get back next week, let's go look at some houses, okay? Okay, cool. Does this time or this time work better for you? Okay, why do we give them two options? Because they're usually gonna choose one of them, right? Or they're gonna tell you why it doesn't work. And when you give them two, they're usually gonna pick the second one, just so you know. And they, when they start telling you, hey, I can't do it because of this, just save all of that information. And why do we use 15 minute increments? Who else uses 15 minute increments when you're setting appointments? Doctors, contractors, lawyers, professionals, right? And people are more likely to show up on a 15, 15 and a 45. What I have been doing recently is I say, okay, perfect. So I've got you down for 415 today. Uh, I'm gonna email you a calendar invite as well so it gets added to your calendar. And then you put a 30 minute reminder on that. So they're getting an email. That makes you look incredibly busy. Right? Hey, well, let me check my calendar real quick. And we all know that your calendar is, your calendar is never totally open, by the way. Oh yeah, I'm totally free tomorrow. I'm free all day. Whatever you need, I'm, I'm here for you. I, whatever you need, I can make it work. No, 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 no. Uh, even if you are free all day. Oh, hold on one second, let me look. Ooh, yeah, 345, I, got, I, I can probably make that work. I'll, I'll, push another, I'll push another meeting forward so I can make sure it works for you. Even though I know that I was gonna be sitting in my underwear, not doing anything in 345, okay? So you're always busy. You're never completely open and free because quite frankly, you shouldn't be always busy, right? You should always have something going on furthering yourself. If uh, I say this all the time. If I offered to pay somebody $200,000 a year to come to this office every single day for 10 hours and scrub the floor with a toothbrush, they'd probably show up, but they won't show up for $200,000 a year for themselves. So we have to start holding ourselves accountable because that's the hardest person to hold accountable is ourselves, right? I, say, I ask this all the time. Who lies to you the most in your life? Yourself yourself okay and we're willing to accept the lie from ourselves for some reason and that's it okay so you set appointments you figured out okay I'm gonna set the appointment we're gonna go look at some houses then you get to those houses and what do you do then and that's the third breakdown that's what David's gonna cover next so is it do you have any questions on that for me to go for questions oh hey there's questions does anybody want to role play anything <laughs> <laughs> the leads are weak, you're weak. For, for those that uh, are not sensitive, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, The Good Leads, was a very, very good uh, movie, but it was made in the 90s, so it's not politically correct today. So just remember that. Don't get mad at me and watch it. Yeah. So, so long ago. Great job, Doug. Thank you. I love listening to you teach. I always learn something. Uh, I put this up just for you, Zach. I, went out, I found uh, Alec Baldwin and Glenn Gary. <laughs> I didn't tell Zach about it before the presentation either. I shouldn't pop up. All right. Great work. Great work, Zach. Thank you. Um, okay. This is the third uh, break deal. It's uh, or third breakdown of a deal. The third break deal. It's all about writing that offer. So at this point, you, you got the information. You got the appointment set. They show up for the appointment. Now what do you do? So it's really a process of elimination in writing an offer or adjusting the home search. So there is no failure in the buying process. Um, it is they're either finding the one, they're looking at something that they don't want, which is getting something out of the way, or you're recalibrating and you're you know re uh, setting up their search. So I like to print off an MLS page for each. Um, some people like to have their own feedback uh, sheets that they do custom for themselves for note taking. Some people pass off. Here's the schools. Here's the taxes. Here's you know everything that you can possibly the closest Starbucks everything to their clients. I'm like no, that overwhelms them, that overloads them. And if you're looking for the perfect experience, it's perfect. Perfectionism leads to procrastination, which leads to paralysis. Wow, look at this 40-page book that you gave me on these five homes that I'm going to see today. Okay, well I guess I'm going to review these later tonight. Maybe I'll review it in the morning. 
right? And then eventually you never get around to it, right? So instead, you as a professional keep the information, you take the notes, if they say something like, oh man, that carpet's ugly, you write it down, right? That way you're giving them the information. Hey, what's the tax rate here? Tax rate's here, what is it, 1.6%. Tax rate here's a 1.3%, HOA's $10 a month, right? Whatever it is, you're the one controlling the information so it doesn't overload and overwhelm them and put them into paralysis. Um, do not give your clients printouts, booklets, agendas, or payments. Uh, you don't want to give them a payment sheet or anything like that. You're keeping the information. Um, now, before entering the home, just give them a quick brief. Hey, this is the square footage. This, this home is 2,500 square feet. It's got four bedrooms. It's on a 7,000 square foot lot, so it's on a nice large lot. There is an HOA. The HOA includes two parks and a pool. It's $40 a month. Um, it is in Temecula Unified School District. Uh, if you've been in a lot of different cities, sometimes somebody might see houses in four different cities. Hey, right now we're in Temecula. Right now we're in Hemet. You know, right now, just kind of reminding them, right? And then we're in the community of Adeline's Farm. We're in Butterfield, right? And then the occupancy status is also a big one. This house is tenant occupied. So we're gonna go through, let's make sure that we see everything that we wanna see. This whole house is owner occupied. The owner is going to be home. Then that way they're not shocked when they walk in and they see somebody. Now, there's three different types of homes that you're gonna show. One is vacant. These are the easiest homes to show for obvious reasons. They're also a great place to recalibrate, right? Have a quick conversation in the kitchen, right? Um, occupied homes. Careful, don't discuss too many terms with the homeowner. You can gather some intel if you want, but do not commit to anything to a homeowner. This is the quickest way to find yourself in a, a, um, a lawsuit is the right word, uh, litigation. Uh, so don't discuss too many uh, terms. Also, don't lose control. Don't let the homeowner hold you at a house for 25 minutes that you do not want to see, telling you about how they've got prime insulation on the inside of the house and better windows, right? Um, so I, you know what? Um, the best way to do that is, hey, I'm David. It's great to meet you. I really appreciate you letting me show your home. Is this still a good time? Because of course they're going to say yes, right? Uh, is this still a good time? Yes. I always want a yes. Um, great. Are there any rooms that we can't open or any areas that I need to avoid or am I good? I just like to hear I'm good. You're good. Okay, cool. We'll just start off in the kitchen, right? We'll start off in the backyard. And then that way you're telling them, we don't want to be escorted around this property by you. You can go do something. I'm going to go show this property. Sound good? Okay. The five-star rating system is the one that I like to use. You can do whatever you want. If you want to use color coding or whatever, just understand it might get confusing. Ask everyone what they thought of the home, not just mom and dad, include the kids. That being said, if their mom or dad show up and they're not going to be living in the property, I don't ask them what they think. Because <laughs> there's too much deep-rooted psychology that has to get rooted through in order for them to come to a decision. And they don't want to come into a house that, they, that their parents like. You want them to come into a house that they like. I know that, that sounds weird, uh, but I've worked with a lot of people over the years. Um, so five stars being the best, one star being the worst. Uh, what do you think of this house? One to five, Odellis. And then she gives me her rating system. And then that's what you're using. It's very easy. Name the homes. Oh, hey, what'd you think of the green carpet home? Mom, moms. Hey, uh, Jim, what'd you think uh, about the pool home or the large yard home or the ugly kitchen home? It doesn't have to be, what did you think of the French kitchen home? Or anything like that. It could just be, hey, what'd you think about the freaking ugly kitchen home? You know what I mean? Because then they're going to remember it. And if you see more than four or five properties, they're going to start blending in together. And when inventory was more abundant, which it was when I got into this, sometimes you're seeing 15, 20 homes. Um, okay, so name the homes. Only keep a maximum of two printouts of homes that you have already seen. Okay, so what do you think of the green carpet house? This, this, this. Okay, so you guys actually like this better than the home with the large yard, everybody? Okay, cool, I'm gonna get rid of this one. And you freaking crumple it up, throw it in the back seat. Let them see that you are getting rid of homes that they don't like. It removes pressure from them. It keeps their palate able to process more so that when they consume something, they've now cleared their palate. They know now that they don't like that one home, right? Um, and it keeps everything fresh. Uh, each time that you eliminate a new property uh, based on the feedback. Oh, I really didn't like it that it was backed up to that main yard or to that main road. Oh, I didn't like that the kitchen didn't overlook the backyard. And you know what, that one home, you didn't like it because it overlooked the, the, the main road. Uh, is that still an issue based on the, the two? Okay, you want to get rid of that home? Okay, great. Constantly keep it at two. If at the end of the day you run them together and then you've got 13 printouts, and it's like, well, what'd you think? It's just too much. It's overwhelming. Okay? Um, so 
this is what I like to do once I've gone through and I've shown them, let's say we've seen seven properties. That would mean I've got three printouts with me, one for the property that we're getting ready to see and two for their favorite so far. We go through that last property, we walk through, um, we say, hey, we've seen a lot of homes today, so why don't we do this? Let's double back on based on these two homes so that they're fresh in our minds. Does that sound good? That is, if you can get them to do that, you're writing an offer 95% of the time. Hey, hey, so what what you think of this last home, home number seven? No, you didn't like it? Okay, let's get rid of it. Okay, so these are our top two right here. Uh, you know what? We've seen a lot of homes today. Why don't we do this? Let's double back on these two. That way they're fresh in our mind. I'll reach out to, this, to the agent, make sure that it's okay. Does that sound good? Most of oh, David, I know you're busy. You don't need to go. We've been out for hours already. You know what? Don't worry about it. Let's go. I know it's all blending in for me. I can't imagine how you guys feel. So let's go out. Let's take a look at it. I'll call the agent on the way. Call the agent. Hey, this is David Sir. I showed your house on Easy Street. Um, my clients loved it. We're on our way to the other house right now. Can we double back and see that house in about 15 minutes? Now, there's a strong possibility that you're not gonna get a hold of the agent. That's okay. Knock on that freaking door. Hey, I'm David Serpa. I showed your house a few moments ago or an hour ago or whatnot. My clients love your home. And it's really between this home and one other one. They've already seen the other home. Can we just step in really quick? I promise we'll be quick. Most people, even the, the tenants, get excited for people that are making that, uh, that decision. Oh yeah, sure. We'll step out. Yeah, go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. And then you get it. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Or, hey, didn't you call my agent? I did. I realized that it's dinner time. They might be spending some time with their family. I did call them. I've already shown your home. If it's not okay, I totally understand. Give them that. If it's not okay, I totally understand. I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Right? And I'm telling you, I've literally never been told no. And I've done this hundreds of times. Um, Hey, uh, call the agent. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you showed your home a little while ago. We'd love to take a look at the house to refresh their memories. Thank you so much. Now, either in the kitchen of that final home, when you double back, if it's vacant, or on the hood of your car, um, or their car or whatnot, all you're going to do is you're going to take those two printouts, you're going to hold them up, and you're going to say, so what do you think? And you're going to set down the two printouts. At that point, if they have found the home, they're going to say, oh, I really like this one. I really like this one, right? If you haven't, uh, you know what? And this almost never happens if they've agreed to double back, right? Because at that point, they've kind of it's skin in the game. So what do you think? Uh, you know what? It's not it. Okay. So what do we need to do in order to uh, recover? What? What, uh, what? Did you like the neighborhoods? Do we need more house? Is this too expensive? Do we want to step it down a little bit? Just find out what they need and then get them back out the door as soon as possible. Um, so now let's say that they want to write the offer. So you don't need to discuss the type of loan. You don't need to discuss their down payment or their closing costs. Oh, hey, you're probably gonna have about this much closing costs until you get to be an OG in the game. And even then, I don't do a lot of that. Hey, uh, let the lender discuss money. We talked about that. Tell them, hey, listen, I'm gonna to talk to the agent. I'm gonna to talk to your lender. I'm gonna do a quick market analysis and I'm gonna give you a call in a few hours to figure out the best way to structure it. Does it sound good? I don't like to say the best way to do the deal, the offer, you know what I mean? I said the best way to structure it. Does that sound good? Okay, now if, if everything works out, when do you wanna move in? And I don't say, if everything works out, when do you wanna move in? Is it, hey, if everything works out you know, uh, perfectly, when do you wanna move in? Okay, cool, so 30 day escrow, 45 day escrow. Again, are these the terms that we are agreeing to right now? No, but all we wanna do is we wanna find out, uh, we're not gonna find out the price, right? Because it's not an open house. I'm gonna go do that on my own, or I'm gonna go do that with my mentor, or I'm gonna go do that with my team lead, right? You don't have to do all of that stuff. Hey, when do you wanna move in? That's it, cool? Does that make sense? If you could say that, the, if you could get them to say, oh, June 15th would be perfect. You've done your job. Get a hold of your mentor, get a hold of your team lead. Or if you're ready to write that offer and you're ready, you feel confident, go ahead and write it up. And it establishes a timeline for your client, of course. Now tell them when to expect to hear from you. Do your homework, call your team lead or mentor if necessary. And then, like I said, under promise, over deliver, right? Hey, I'm gonna give you a call sometime this evening. Give them a call in two hours, right? Or I'm gonna give you a call in you know, two to three hours. Give them a call in an hour and a half. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to have them waiting around to hear from you. 
because you you know you didn't hear from the agent or you didn't do this or you didn't do that or you didn't get the market analysis done because you, you know your kid had soccer practice or whatever. That's why you under promise. Hey, I'll get this done by tomorrow morning if that's what it is. But a lot of times when it's a, when it comes to writing offers, you want to freaking get it done. Now, um, if you do not write an offer, hey, I totally understand. We just didn't find the right one today. Is there anything that I need to, need to adjust for your search? It says, you stated that you were not picky. 62 showings in five months has determined that that was a lie. Of course it's true. Uh, so get an idea for when they want to go back out. Um, hey, I totally understand. We just didn't find the right one today. Am I right? Okay, cool. Uh, what do I need to adjust for the home search so that we have a more successful outing next time? Okay, when's next time? Now I'm telling you, when you ask questions just frankly, and you do, like Zach said, uh, they're not gonna want to, or they'll grab a coffee to go with their cheap coffee, or their, their cheap cookie to go with the expensive Starbucks I sent them. Like when you do things like that, when you're a little bit outrageous, and I'm outrageous in a different way. I don't really treat a whole lot of. I do the big, uh, you know, the client events and whatnot. But I am outrageous. You have to be a little bit outrageous. Being on the autism spectrum, I ask people things, I say things that normally would be considered rude. But I just, in an honest quest for information, I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, hey, what do you qualify for? I mean, how much do you make monthly? You know, and they're like figuring it out or whatnot. Okay, well, you know, and for other people that might be rude. For me, I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm trying to problem solve. So be willing to be outrageous. If you are a little bit outrageous, it's more likely that you're gonna get paid. Hey, um, you guys are going out looking at open houses today? I know I can't make it, I'm so sorry. Calling in the Starbucks order is freaking genius. I love it. There's a lot of really great things that I'm constantly learning from people around me uh, because I'm surrounded by great people. So uh, just get an idea for when they want to go back out and then get back out. Hey, and you don't have to have the house picked out in order to commit to an appointment. You can say, hey, are you guys open on Saturday and Sunday? You want to go back out next weekend? Or hey, are you looking, you want to go back out this Thursday and Friday? Let's go back out. Let's look. Let's commit to a day. And then find the property. Um, I will look for you and I will find you. The perfect house. <laughs> Any questions? Cool. Well, that's it. That is the three breakdowns. I've taught this class freaking like probably 40, 50 times. Actually, probably 40 times here, probably 100 times. Uh, that's it. That's the last time I'm ever going to do it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. Yeah.